In this lesson, you will learn how to interpret exponential functions. Exponential functions can demonstrate growth, which means that the function is increasing, or they can represent decay, which means that the function is decreasing. Now the general form for an exponential function is f of x equals a times b to the power of x. This is the general form. It can also be represented as f of x equals b to the x if a equals 1. Now, if we're looking at these two graphs here, we have two different types of exponential functions, and I'm going to show you how to interpret this. The graph on the left, what do you notice? You see that the y values are very low, and then all of a sudden they start to increase rapidly. So this means that as x increases, y increases rapidly. This is an example of exponential growth because the function is increasing. The equation for this graph is y equals 3 to the power of x. Now let's look at the graph over here on the right. What you see on the right is high y values that start rapidly decreasing as x increases. Over here you have a graph that shows exponential decay. And the function for this graph is y equals 0 0.5 raised to the power of x. Now when we're thinking about this general form that I wrote second, f of x equals b to the power of x, we see that a has a value of 1 for both of these functions, right? Because we don't see anything in front of this. So you can imagine that there's a little 1 here, right? The b is the rate. So when b is greater than 0 but less than 1, as you have in the case on the right, which you have 0.5x, this is decay. And when b is greater than 1, right? You have 3 as b in the growth function, you get exponential growth. So let's solve a problem together now. Which equation matches the relationship shown in the table? So what you have here is a table of values and you want to be able to identify the correct equation. To find the correct equation, choose an x value from the first column and substitute it into each equation to see if you get the corresponding y value. So we have the equations over here. Um, we have four different options, and we have a is y equals 3 to the power of x. So let's start there. We're going to take this x value of 2 and see if we can use one of these functions to generate the y value of 4. So we're working with the ordered pair 2, 4. So let's try it with a. y equals 3 raised to the power of x, which in this case is 2. 3 squared is 9, so for this function, when x equals 2, y equals 9. So we know that this one isn't correct because we want y to equal 4 when x equals 2. Let's try b. y equals 3 raised to the power of x minus 1, and we're looking for x equals 2, so this would be 3 raised to the power of 2 minus 1, right, which is 3 just to the power of 1, which equals 3. And we're looking for y to equal 4, so we know that this one also won't work. Now let's take a look down here at d. d equals y, y equals x squared. So again, we're looking at x equals 2, so this would be 2 raised to the power of 2. This one equals 4. Okay, so we have a potential match. This d is still in the running. Let's try c. y equals 2 to the power of x. So y equals 2 to the x, and again, x equals 2 for this coordinate. So you'd have 2 squared, which equals 4, and we get the, the y value we're looking for, so c is also still in the running. Now let's try what happens when x equals 4. We've eliminated a and b, now we're working with c and d. So when x equals 4, y equals 2 to the x for option c, so this would be 2 to the power of 4. And um, I'm just going to put c, and equation d, y equals x to the power of 2, which we're looking at x equals 4, so 4 squared. 4 squared equals 16. 2 to the power of 4, 2 raised to the power of 4 is 16 as well, so we still have to determine because so far both equations are working out for the first two coordinates. Let's try this coordinate here. What about when x equals 6? So I'm going to erase this earlier work so we can make some room. Okay, so when x equals 6, the equation in option C is y equals 2 to the power of x. So let's substitute x. So you're going to 
2 to the power of 6. 2 to the power of 6 equals 64. Okay, so option C still is working out. We get y equals 64, which is what we want. Let's try D. We would have y equals x squared, and in this case, x is 6. And we would have 6 squared. 6 squared is 6 times 6, which equals 36, which is not 64. So actually, now we've finally eliminated D. We know that the correct equation is y equals 2 to the power of x. That's the equation for this table. Let's try another problem together. Cal is getting back into running after an injury. She starts out by running for 10 minutes and then plans to run 15% longer each day. So we know she starts off with 10 minute runs and then she's going to increase that time 15% each day. What you have over here on the right is an equation that represents the amount of time that she will spend running. As you can see, the y values of this function are rapidly increasing. So this is going to be an exponential growth function. and we want to write an equation that models this situation. So the general form for the exponential function is y equals a times b to the power of x. Now in this equation, a is the initial value and b is the rate. When b is greater than 1, the graph increases very rapidly as x values increase, right? Because when b is greater than 1, you have that growth situation being modeled. And you can see that from the graph, the exponential function is demonstrating growth. You're going to rewrite b as 1 plus the rate, all right? Let's just say plus r, r standing for the rate, and we still have a. So now we have a slightly modified version because this will give us a value of b that's greater than 1. So let's substitute in what we know. The initial value is the amount of time she starts running. When x equals 0, y equals 10. We can see that right there on a graph. And so she starts with 10 minute runs. Then she's going to increase that by 15% each day. And when you're doing problems like this, you want to rewrite the percentage as a decimal. So 15% being 0 0.15. So plus 0 0.15 raised to the power of x. Simplify the terms inside the parentheses and you get 10 times 1 plus 0.15, or, right, this turns into 1.15. Put that in parentheses, raise that to the power of x, and then include the initial value of 10. Now you have your formula. y equals 10 times the quantity 1.15 to the power of x. And as you can see, we get this increasing function. And if you were to plug in values for x, you would start to generate the points that make up this curve here. The initial value is 10. And remember, I told you that a equals the initial. The initial is when x equals 0, which is going to correspond to the y-intercept. And I mentioned earlier, this graph has a y-intercept of 10. So we do have the correct equation here. In this lesson, you've learned how to interpret exponential equations. Thanks for watching.